ridiculous. That group right there, just radical, sold out God men who are set on fire to carry the great news of the gospel all around the globe. Give us some light in this place as Miss Kathy comes to the altar just to give you a heads up as I extend a brief and final challenge to you. She's coming with the drugs. My message is a service announcement. Just say no. Hers will be those who have prescription. Just say yes. Thanks, guys, for letting me be here this week and helping each and every one of y'all out. But if you will, please come up and get your drugs <laughs> so you can take them home with you. Now, as I call out your name, Ava Nova. I know she was going to call it out in front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, Samantha. Heaven. And that's a name to have, Heaven. Here's where I grieve. I want every pastor in the room to take his stand because far too often than not, we never celebrate the men of the gospel who protect our souls. So all you pastors stand to your feet. Thank you for taking your time out this week. Come on, you can do better than that. You mean the world to me. The local church is mandatory because it's the vehicle God uses to promote his gospel. What I do cannot be done if there is no local church where you go to be fed, discipled, matured, equipped until one new man rises up and is able to stand flat-footed on the gospel. What is gospel? It's God life. And we oftentimes get spooked by the word so we don't go forward in promoting it. It's God life. It's new life. It is kingdom life. It is heaven that awaits us already, but not yet. So since we've got this investment and deposit, it's like the promissory ring. It's that engagement ring that says you are sealed and completely taken care of. The battle was not just fixed, it was finished on the cross. We win, and God is forever exalted on the throne of glory. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to serve you this week. And as we publicly, appreciatively applauded our pastors, I'm going to ask right now that Cain comes to this altar. Yes, and Panfork leadership, if you are here, come hither. Yes. You have in a Cade Wilcox, a man who is earnestly invested in doing it God's way. You have in Cade someone who wants you to have the very best in preaching and worship so that you are well fed and not just entertained. You have in Cade a man who wants to do it by the book and not just because we can be impressive in the association 
with countless hundreds we want to self and not to save him. He's not a numbers man, gets him in a world of trouble, but he is a man of truth. And the leadership of Panfort want to salute you, my brother, for your years sown in tears and for your dedication with your bride, who is all that a bag of onions and a Dr. Pepper herself. <laughs> Lacey is the bomb. Yes. More than one way. Hey, oh, that's a whole nother camp. <laughs> well, Kate, on behalf of our association, we just want to say thank you for all you've done for us. Over these four years, I guess. We love you. We're not happy necessarily that you're going, but we know we're going, you're going because that's where God's leading you. And if God's got leading you, he's got great things in store for you. He's got great things in store for this camp. So as Pan Fork Youth Camp, we just want to take a moment to say thank you for all that you've done. So let's give Cade and the big shot. For you, for Lacey, as God as y'all continue to go where God's leading you, and um, we love you so much more than we can ever say. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this camp. Lord, we thank you for the legacy that this camp has had for 50, 60 years, Lord. And God, the men that you have brought to us that have continued on this ministry of this camp, and we thank you especially for Cade and his leadership over these past few years. Lord, not only... Um, his uh, leadership and getting things done here at the camp that's needed to be done, but most importantly, his godly leadership and how he has prayed over this camp, brought the right people in to speak to our hearts at the right time. Lord, um, we just can't say enough about what he has done and the leadership he has brought to us. And so, Lord, we pray for him and Lacey as they begin this new chapter of ministry in their life, Father. And God, we pray that you would just bless them in mighty ways. Father, as they continue to impact your kingdom for the gospel. And Lord, we pray for us as Pan Fork, Lord. We know you have someone in store for us, Lord, who's going to pick up the ball and continue on in the ministry here, Father. And Lord, may we listen to you as you lead, lead us, guide us, and direct us, Father, so that you will receive all the glory. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right quick, Cain, many of you asked to what is just going down. So if you would give a snapshot of what God does in transitioning call, you don't always get to stay even where you love the most. God has this salt, pepper, seasoning, alien style that he wants to scatter abroad. So if you would just give a snapshot of what God is doing with you and your, your wife in ministry. Just real quick, he's a lot funnier than I am, so uh, I'll be quick. Um, <laughs> My heart is to pastor and to plant churches, and so we have the opportunity to go and do that at a church in Lubbock. It's a church plant who plants churches, and so we're going to go, and I'm going to be one of the pastors there for the next three, you know, three or four years, and then uh, our church uh, intentionally plants other churches, and so we'll eventually uh, get to be church planters, and that's our vision, um, and the way we see that uh, the New Testament precedent for evangelism is that churches would be planted where churches aren't present, both domestically and internationally. And so um, that's what we're going to do. Um, it's been a real joy to get a create an environment here where you can come and uh, experience Christ and be satisfied in Him. And, you know, our deep, deep desire is that, that when you get home and the bottom falls out, that you would find deep satisfaction in Christ and His un unchangingness and that, um, that that would be lasting both now and when you're 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 all the way to the grave, that He would be enough for you. That, that, that everything else would be unsatisfying and that he would be satisfying. And so um, that's our prayer for you. And we appreciate you uh, coming with your sponsors and uh, giving us a shot to um, share the gospel with you and to worship with you. It's been a real, real pleasure. Um, that's what it means to have this theme umbrella over the week that is deeper. You don't get satisfaction at the shallow end of the pool. But I don't feel like I can swim. There's God 
who calls you on the water of faith to the deep. And when you keep your eyes upon Jesus, you don't look left or right. You won't sink, nor need you fear that you won't be able to stand. But you can't really walk on water. You have Jesus who does super on top of your natural. That's good. <laughs> That's miraculous right there. And though there are no rules for walking water, as Cade and Lacey are jumping out of the boat to some unfamiliar territory in this church planting business with a group of people they are sold out to, but just now getting to know, they covet your prayers. And I just beg you to pray, bless you, bless you. You're welcome. For those who are likewise experiencing a gnawing call on your life, inside of you, God is saying, come on, come further, come to me. And you got a case of the can't help it. You don't want to go. You've been white knuckling, brown knuckling, black knuckling in the back of a chair. And God is saying, release your pride and come forward in me. Let me just give you two more tidbits scripturally so that God's word is the last word edgewise that you will hear. When you look at this, I pray that you will be those who live it to the full. I think there's a passage over in John that God can challenge us in going home with. If you look at John, and you look at John 15, 7, those who are craving for voice to be filled in their life, he's already said to us, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And in John 15, 7, he says, if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Watch this, this is so phenomenal, this is so delicioso, this part. You can ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. So that means God is a genie in a bottle? No! That means when you are wrapped up, tied up, tangled in his love, you don't want anything but what God wants for you. That's right. Remaining, abiding in him is that Velcro cling that you must have on the Lord. And he carries you from danger seen and unseen, from glory to glory to glory. And I'm excited that you will remain in him. I'll decree it. I'll declare it. I'm going to claim it. For those who are fretful, you'll be tempted to go right back to old ways. I shared with one of the youth, I'll share with you, only dogs return back to their vomit. Yeah, that's nasty. So don't go back there. Whatever your vomit was, leave it. I don't want to hear any testimony. <laughs> nasty. And you ought to be that grossed out. Some of you in the room, if there's a vomit session, just hearing it makes you heave. Can I get a witness? If you're surrounding someone, you're like, no, 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 please, no. Because what does it do to you? <laughs> yeah, makes you want to have the same experience that they are unfortunately having. So translation from the text, remain in God and be vomit free. It's stinking, by the way. But what you are called on to do, for those who must, as this brother sneeze, get rid of the junk from their lives. Maybe you ought to volunteer a servant to hold their hair back. Don't look, because you'll be with them. But hold the hair back. Let them get out of them what has robbed them of joy. And then one more passage in Acts tells us what next. Acts chapter 2. I found it. Verse 38. This is potent for a last minute challenge. This is heavy. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 through 47. Let me get a box.